Hello, dear friends. I'm Carly Wharton. Welcome back to my porch. Welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I am giving you four daily habits to incorporate to help you get into your body. So I just finished making a video that was telling the story of how I, through all the twists and turns, came to this calling of getting in my body. So if you're at all interested in all of the things that happened before that, check out that other video. Uh, in this video, I am also going to own that I am a very new beginner at this idea of getting in my body. And so I'm a virtual like couch potato in this field. And I've had to find ways to come to it in a way that only a beginner could figure out because I have no skills. I have to build skills from scratch to get in my body. So these are four habits that I have personally worked on incorporating in my daily life that I feel have helped me. So habit number one is a a physical check-in with your body of some sort, whatever that looks like for you. So exercise, maybe, maybe it's just stretching. I set my timer for 10 minutes and I stretch my body and I do that every day. And I feel like one, my flexibility has gotten greatly improved with just 10 minutes a day. Um, some days, if I have more energy, I do a yoga video that's still only usually 10 to 15 minutes long. Um, and recently I felt so good that I was inspired to like take some weights and kind of work with, work with those and figure that out and like run on some hills and letting the energy that I'm building, um, letting my body ask for what it wants. And my bare minimum is every single day at a bare minimum, 10 minutes of stretching. And if I do that, I count the day and I've had like 54 days of daily exercise. Um, and already my body feels so much better and has so much more energy to ask for more and more and more activity. So as it does, I'm giving it to it, but it's a very low bar to start. And that is my best advice. Like pick something that feels realistic. And if all it is sitting yourself on the floor and like stretching your legs for 10 minutes, like that counts, totally counts. So that daily physical check-in alone is going to help you get inside your body. And like any other skill, it's going to build incrementally uh, like a brand new muscle. Like you're going to have to lift little five pound weights and like do it at whatever level you're at and grow from there and admire the progress that you make along the way. My second habit is to read the food labels of everything that you eat. Know what goes in pay attention to what comes out. And if there's a problem anywhere along the way, change what you're eating. Don't eat the same thing that makes your system feel like crap every time you eat it. And this is me talking to my future self who might have forgotten what I know right now because I know for the vast majority of my life, I mindlessly consumed whatever I wanted. Um, sugar, all the processed foods, all the fast food, all the greasy, deep fried, everything. Um, I was all about all of it. And my body felt like crap basically my whole life to the point where it was so normal. I didn't even know the effect that that food was having on me. And now I do. And so I'm hoping to, to pay attention to what I'm putting in my body and I know what my body wants. So paying attention to what I'm feeding myself only makes sense. And reading food labels is a habit that naturally progressed by itself. Like when I was consciously understanding the, the value, the nutritional value of every single thing that I was eating, I naturally made different choices. I, I could no longer add up the, what I was actually doing to my body, um, and still do it. I just couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to make that choice anymore because now I know better and knowing better is a tool all by itself. So you don't have to cut anything out necessarily, just know what's going in. And if it doesn't make you feel good, then evaluate, is that really something that's worth eating? Because not feeling good is a price to pay. So maybe the dollar menu at McDonald's, it's cheap. And I like those little cheeseburgers and I haven't put extra pickles and oh, I like those. They taste so good in the moment, but my stomach doesn't feel good after I eat those. So cheap food, 
bad reaction, what is the real cost of that? So knowing the starting point of even just knowing the value of what you're putting through your system, that has its own awareness and that awareness can grow into more and more positive choices of what your body truly wants to eat. Um, the next one, super easy, go outside, close your eyes and listen. Feel, tune into your other senses, turn your eyes off for just a minute. Like the first thing that comes is I can feel breeze on this side. So I know the wind is coming from this way. It's a little cool, the temperature, it's a little cooler than my body. Ooh, now there's wind all around me. I also hear this hum of insects. Take a deep breath. Feel my body rise and fall with my breath. Bam, I'm in my body. Easy peasy, 30 seconds. So it's like that. It's like dose yourself with, with a few minutes every day of getting in your body and intentionally practicing connecting to the body. Like if you want to build your bicep and you try to lift a hundred pound weight and you can't do it, would you give up or would you try a 25 pound weight? And would you practice with that one until you could do a 45 pound weight? And now you're really pumping some iron. I don't know. I don't lift things. I don't know if that's a lot of weight or not. Probably it isn't. Um, I have the upper body strength of a kitten. So anywho, when we engage our other senses, it automatically drops us down into our body because we can't feel our senses and have all of these like manic thoughts, which I'm speaking from my own experience of what it feels like. Sometimes my brain is just firing on all cylinders and my body is basically a paperweight. Like I just sit in the same spot and I go with my brain and brain and brain and brain and brain. And, brain and I don't feed myself. I don't drink any water. I don't move my body. I don't like give myself what I need because I'm just like so locked inside my mind. And so when I come outside, when I listen, when I feel the breeze on my skin, it feels like a dose of calmness. It feels like a dose of relief to let go of what's going on in my brain and to just be inside my body. It feels amazing. Mini meditations. This is a concept that I've practiced on my own, um, but listening to Eckhart Tolle talk about it, he gave several good examples like washing your hands. Like that's something that, you know, especially on the days that I have to go to work, I do multiple times a day and taking those couple minutes to not just like in your mind, think about all the things that you need to get done and what you're going to do next. And, oh, I got to do this after work and I got to get this thing done and I got to pay that bill. And like, while you're washing your hands, you're tormenting yourself inside your brain. So tune out of that you know, even close your eyes and just feel the hot water on your hands and feel the soap being slick. And like, did you ever stand in the bathroom as a kid when you got your bathroom hall pass and you're just like making soap bubbles in between your fingers because you don't want to go back to class and be around everybody else. So you're just like really soaking up this moment of solitude and like really enjoying it and feel the soap rinse off your hands and take the paper towel and really gently massage your hands as you dry them. Oh my gosh, it's a sensual experience to wash your hands. So that's just one example. The other examples are walking. Have you ever been in your body while you're walking? It's delicious. I mean, like feel your hips, feel your muscles, feel your torso moving and supporting you and balancing you upright. Like we walk on two legs, like almost, you know, anyways, I'm not a, I'm not a biologist. It, it doesn't matter walking, hand washing, and your shower. That's that's a difficult one for me because it's longer. I don't have the muscles to like really focus in my senses for 15 minutes, but I do try to come back to that. I do try to like soak my hair and like really feel it on my hands and feel it in my scalp and really try to connect with my body's experience in that moment. Not my head, not my thinking, not, you know, what am I going to do after the shower? What else do I need to get done today? What just happened before I came in here? What does everybody else need from me? <laughs> on and on and on. Um, the things that I used to think about. It's like, let me just put some shampoo on my hair. Let me wash my face. And let me like soap up this loofah. And let me take the towel afterwards and like gently dry myself off. 
and then take some lotion and like really focus on moisturizing every little bit of myself. And all of that is a dose of being in your body. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. And the last one, no, no, that was the last one. So there you go. There's four daily habits to incorporate if you're wanting to practice getting in your body. Spoken by a true couch potato beginner, <laughs> totally foreign concept of being in my body. And these four things have helped me greatly. So if this content was helpful for you, I encourage you to like this video, subscribe to my channel so you're notified of all of my daily videos. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Until next time, take such good care of yourself. And so will I.